looking forward to having this half hour with you where we will present different approaches to smart learning environments. Um, I'm Renata from Karen Open Higher Education and uh, this is Mike from okay. AI Campus. And um, yeah, together we will guide you through this um, session. We would like um, to give you um, global on the one hand, global approach uh, or um, an example of a global approach facing east to China of how such a very broad smart learning environment can be um, set up. And on the other hand, we would like to give you two examples of our own organizations, how we um, how we approach different aspects of smart learning environments in our own uh, learning management systems. And uh, we are looking forward to also having a discussion with you if you would like to ask questions or have comments on that or examples yourself. First, I would like to start um, with the question, what actually is a smart learning environment? Often when we talk about uh, smart learning environments, people first think about learning management systems, but what we would like to go into a little bit more detail into the next minutes is that a smart learning environment is actually much broader than just a learning management system. I will first go into a few key features um, in a kind of like a list format and then look at, um, uh, oh, now it's a little bit smaller on my screen, look at a few feet um, at a model of a smart learning environment where we will then go into concrete application examples. So um, what are key features of such a smart learning environment that go beyond also a, a, a learning management system as you um, as um, most of you might know it. So on the one hand, um, we have of course the learning devices and this refers to objects such as projectors, smart boards, smartphones and so on that are integrated into such a learning space. Then we also have applications, tools and features, and this includes all tools and software applications that support uh, the learning process. Um, we talk about the intelligent central interface here now, and this is maybe what you think about as a learning management systems. This, this, these are forms and core elements of a smart learning environment. Um, a very central part or a key feature of a smart learning environment is also mobility. So learning should be accessible via, via mobile devices and it should be accessible if possible from anywhere at any time um, that a learner wants to learn. Then we also have as a fifth key feature technical interoperability of all tools and features. Here you probably know um, these things like single sign on uh, um, overarching learning analytics and so on. So these are also key features of smart learning environments. But if we think about smart learning environments, this is not only about digital learning. It is also about offline setting and this is important as well. So a smart learning environment also includes the design of the offline space. Um, for instance, learning labs. Um, so if we think about learning also as digitally enhanced learning, we also have to think about um, furniture that is as flex flexible as possible and um, other features of an offline learning space. And then of course, as the last key feature that we would like to highlight here, aspects of adaptability and personalization of such a learning journey. So I would like to go into the next um, slide and I will close the conversation tool here if that is possible to make that a little bit larger. Um, and what we did here is we mapped um, all different aspects or, or a lot of these different aspects of smart learning environments. And what you can see in the middle is kind of like the learning management system and uh, around that all kinds of different aspects that are important for such smart learning environments. Today, we will mostly focus in our own um, uh, examples on blended learning. If this is too small, this is the, the red little square here. And then also social learning. So we will give two examples of such approaches. 
But first, we would like to give you um, an example from China that is pretty um, extensive in its functionalities. And Mike will give you an overview of how such a smart learning environment is approached there and actually already for quite some time, uh, which is an interesting if we then look where we stand at the moment here in Europe. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, it might be when, when I'm uh, describing the use case now, it might be uh, important or interesting to see that in our smart learning environment model, we have uh, the, the, in, the digital interface, uh, the LMS in most cases, we have as the core, as the centerpiece of a smart learning environment. This is quite interesting if we are having a look now and really facing east and having this example from China, from the Tsinghua University. It's basically, it started all with, uh, with an LMS, um, uh, which uh, served uh, or served as a MOOC provider platform. It's called Xuetang X. Uh, it was a local project in the beginning in 2013. And um, uh, yeah, it was filled with content by uh, the Tsinghua uh, University. But then it quite fast turned into a nationwide project. So there were more and more, uh, um, more and more higher education institutions coming and basically creating, developing all sorts of content um, from videos to micro courses to uh, MOOCs up to uh, a full uh, uh, digital degree programs. And so that we are now having more than 400, uh, 400 in institutions in China, uh, basically developing content for uh, a Xuetang X. And they are also curating content. So they are taking uh, 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 content from international institutions, which they try to fully embed into, uh, into the platform instead of acting as a hub and, uh, and uh, uh, interlinking uh, to it. That happens sometimes, but the main policy really is to fully embed, to centralize the learning in this, uh, in this learning management uh, system, which makes it uh, quite interesting and kind of different as what we are doing over here, where we have like uh, uh, more uh, local uh, solutions and uh, approaches. And uh, iteratively, since uh, 2013, they uh, they developed uh, this uh, this uh, LMS to a smart learning environment by adding tools and features, which at first gives instructors the possibility to develop and provide uh, content in various forms to their learners, and in turn, which gives the learners the opportunity to learn, to project, and uh, take um, exams basically 24/7. And then in 2016, something something surprising was happening. Um, the Tsinghua University adding the so-called rain classroom uh, to uh, their learning environment, and which, in my out of my perspective, really make this uh, um, uh, a smart uh, this learning environment. What they basically did with the uh, rain classroom, they developed uh, a, a basic but very powerful learning man management system, and implemented it into WeChat, uh, into um, a, a mobile web app, um, a mobile app, which was basically in, uh, in first use as a, uh, as a tool for social, social interaction, uh, like, um, like WhatsApp. But uh, uh, WeChat is basically so much more than that. It developed uh, as well. Uh, and uh, it is uh, what we might call a multi-purpose app. In China, it's also called a super app because like there are so many functions which are coming together where we in the West might use uh, uh, different uh, different apps. So you have a messaging function, which was in there for, right from the beginning. A timeline was added. It's, it's called Moment. It's compared to what, what Facebook uh, has. Uh, there's a mobile payment function since uh, uh, since a year or so. Uh, uh, you 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 receive your violation tickets uh, also uh, in in certain cities in in China. If you're crossing the streets uh, at red light, for example, you immediately get a get a ticket and you can pay it with a, a mobile payment function. Uh, it has a basic dating uh, function inside, so you can find people and maybe your future husband or wife, and what has been added in 2016, it was the RAIN classroom, so a mobile LMS. And with this, it kind of, uh, it kind of uh, you know, changes what we see or how we see a smart learning environment, because suddenly there are two 
uh, smart intelligent devices where the learning is being provided and where the data basically from the learners is, is, is coming together. Um, yeah, and that's the RAIN classroom. Let's have a look uh, on this. Um, okay, it's loading. Can we already see it? No. Yeah, so if we if we have a look at the screenshot right in the left, it's, it's really interesting because that's that's the landing page of the LMS in, in WeChat and you can already see, yeah, that you are basically in a chat room uh, and you can interact uh, with, a, with a chat bot. So you already have like uh, this, this feeling that you are in a field where social interaction uh, happens and there you can start, uh, of course, like chatting with the chatbot. You can immediately switch to uh, uh, your collabor uh, collaborative uh, learning spaces into uh, rooms you can create to come together with certain uh, uh, groups of learners. You can, of course, also switch uh, uh, from the student perspective to to the dashboard where you have an overview uh, uh, which courses you are enrolled in and which activities you might enroll in, which uh, kind of chat rooms and and and, and learning spaces. And because uh, the students are quite uh, quite active when they are uh, when they are uh, in uh, the rain classroom, you also have a dashboard where you have an overview. Uh, which which project you are you are active in and if you are uh, having a look at uh, the screenshot on the right side you see the 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 uh, um, uh, you see the dashboard from the instructor's point of view so there you can as an instructor you can create courses and there the the, the aspect of interoperability also came into play as an instructor i can create my course i can I can shift like lots of content uh, uh, from uh, uh, Xiaotang X uh, straight into my uh, into my classroom, like quizzes, like texts, like videos, and individualize the learner. And of course, I can also see which students are active in my uh, in my courses, in my classrooms, and how they perform uh, via learning analytics. How can I do this uh, as an instructor? I can use uh, I can use an interface. I need a, a notebook or, or a desktop PC, and uh, there, as we can see over here, right on the, on the right side, you have the in import function where can, where you can import all sorts of formats. But at the same time, you have a built-in quiz engine. You have different uh, types of quizzes you can uh, you can uh, develop. You have a poll function um, and uh, all sorts of things, and in, even like an open question. And there, I can pre-select as an, an, an instructor how uh, the uh, uh, the students can interact with me. Uh, they can, for example, uh, send a PowerPoint presentation, uh, video messages, uh, um, uh, spoken messages, uh, free text, and all of these things. And the, uh, um, uh, what, what makes this special as well, I can add the things over here, I can save it, and then it's going to be, it's, it's immediately synchronized with WeChat and, and it's live and, uh, and the students can start uh, learning. Yeah, and to make this, uh, this learning management uh, complete, you of course uh, also have learning analytics, uh, quite fine-grained as well, so it's, it's, it's more or less the things we, we know from our LMSs as well. Um, um, but what's interesting over here is that the, the learning analytics are more or less fully transparent. So, which means everything I can see how students perform, like individually or in the, uh, in groups as a collective, uh, that's maybe an add-on when it comes to, uh, to, to Rain Classroom. It's completely to, uh, transparent to the student as well. So they can see how they perform and if they are interested or they have questions, they can interact like in a, in a chat group with the student uh, student instructors and uh, get in touch uh, with uh, uh, the, the, the teacher, instructor or professor individually. Yeah, so that's basically uh, the approach we are having in China. We now want to come back uh, to Germany and, uh, and see a different a sort of approach because we are really thinking the smart learning environment in a different way where really the 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 the, um, the lms um, is uh, in the in the center piece uh, it's it's the core where everything is, is running together and and the digital uh, components and formats are being provided to the students that they have the possibility to learn and uh, as uh, the lms at the interface 
we are more like uh, instead of integrating the LMS into something else, we are attaching and embedding tools and features to uh, the LMS to in order to make it uh, a, a bit uh, to make it smarter. And um, yeah, I wanna I wanna start now uh, with uh, with the use case we are having uh, at the AI campus. Uh, we have to say that's a pilot project. We we we, we started one year ago, and uh, uh, we are coming now to a blended learning approach, um, which is uh, going to be uh, developed um, by uh, higher education institutions in Hessen. And uh, what's interesting there uh, for, 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 for German circumstances, I would say it's a quite centralized approach as well, because it's really like a collaboration between uh, three higher education institutions and a startup, uh, a startup which is doing uh, the learning and instructional design. And here you see that it's uh, it's uh, a quite new thing because on one side it's an honor degree program, so it's a it's it's a micro uh, degree program consisting of uh, six courses. We have three essentials, and then in the middle uh, we have uh, three electives uh, where uh, the learners can focus on uh, certain uh, topics. And um, all students from all participating universities can uh, be part in this uh, blended learning setting. And the blended learning setting, this is can be uh, compared to what's happening in China because it's it's really like a broad mix of formats which are brought together, and that makes uh, the blended learning like a qualitative approach, which is being brought together in a meaningful way. Um, um, and uh, yeah, and what what kind of formats do we have? We have uh, 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 online uh, online lectures. We have web based tutorials, which is fully digital. Um, we have collaborative uh, learning spaces. So the same thing. We need like uh, rooms where, where where students are coming together and develop ideas, for example, and come into exchange. And there are also like um, uh, on campus events. And uh, what what or who is, is is acting as the digital interface? So with the AI campus at, uh, at as the digital interface, bringing all the things together and providing the digital learning, we need to attach uh, lots of tools and features to make the learning smart and to make like the, the, the this blended learning uh, uh, scenario like really like an individual learning experiments too. Uh, the relevant learners and therefore for, for example if we are having like um, we also have already have like an authoring uh, also author, uh, uh, authoring tool uh, implemented where where like quizzes can be uh, created but for example we also need like a program uh, in, in a programming environment which we are having not integrated at the moment and there we have to see which uh, which uh, which programming environment serves the learner and uh, the, the instructor in the best possible way. So the technology has to serve the learning. And if tests are being done in this uh, in this case, then the tool can be attached to um, the learning environment and make it successively step by step a bit smarter. Yeah, um, that's so far from my side, from the two use cases, I would now allow uh, like to hand over again to Renata and um, to uh, present their um, uh, use case when it comes to social learning. Yes, um, I will uh, give a very short um, uh, input insight into a social learning on Karen campus and to also allow for so we, I've seen that we already have questions in the chat. So uh, we also want to make sure that we have some time in the end to to discuss a little bit. Um, when we talk about social learning, so we've seen the, um, the the example from China where the LMS system is integrated into a social um, into into such a, a social um, functionality, the the WeChat app. And on the other hand, we know that a lot of um, learning management systems, as we have them in Europe, still use discussion forums as kind of like the social learning environment. Um, or the central social learning environment. But m those of you who have worked with discussion forums know that this is not the ideal uh, 
um, social learning environment. It is really hard to keep them alive. You have to didacticize your learning a lot for, for students to actually use them to communicate with each other, to comment on each other's post, posts. So the question is, how can we make that such learning environment smarter to actually allow for social learning? And uh, what we actually very timely at Karen launched this week um, on Monday, so two days ago, is the community a new community feature. So we, ex um, we replaced uh, some of these old um, discussion forums. And what we did is we um, introduced a collaboration software, Mattermost, for those who know this one, um, for those who know Slack, uh, this is very similar and we integrated it into the Karen campus. And as you can see here, for instance, um, we have four different categories, um, the home screen, explore, the success page, and community, because this is such a central feature to, so, to learning, to social learning. And uh, we've seen that all, especially during times of fully digital learning. Um, this is very similar to what you see what you see in other um, applications such as Slack. You have public as well as private channels. Uh, you, you can use direct messaging, and what you, what this allows you now as a tutor, as a teacher, but also as students, also as pr um, private people, is um, to do, for instance, project based learning. You can have um, supervised or unsupervised learning. You can form your own groups. You can um, form groups for your classes, but they can do that themselves as well, for instance, in in um, self-paced courses. So this gives the learner much more autonomy also to use social learning and to form groups, not to go to other um, uh, uh, apps like WhatsApp, what we've seen a lot with our learners, that they went to other um, uh, tools because the, the, the um, chat functionalities in uh, discussion boards are not enough for them. Um, but it really allows now the learner for all these different use cases for blended learning, for online learning, for um, for supervised and unsupervised learning to do, to, to have social learning together. And um, this is probably something that we will see much more. We've heard it from the KI campus already that they will introduce that as well um, in the next, in the coming months and the coming year. Um, I would like to wrap this up before we go into the questions and put these two approaches next to each other. So we've seen two very different approaches to smart learning environments. On the one hand, one that um, embeds a learning ma management system into a communication tool. And on the other hand, what do we see here in Europe? A learning management system that starts with the learning. Uh, that is much more fragmented. We have that on university, on, on higher education institution level, on topic level, such as the AI campus, on um, user group level, maybe when you look at the current campus, which is for refugee students, we have very fragmented, um, a very fragmented landscape that starts with learning and then plugs in um, or embeds tools such as collaboration tools or uh, proctoring tools, uh, programming tools, and so on, um, to support this specific learning and to support a specific user group and this specific use case. So we have very different um, approaches. Uh, one aspect that we probably might want to mention here as well is, of course, um, in the European context, GDPR compliance is a big discussion, which also makes us less fast than the Chinese example, probably. But we see that there is a lot of room to also go um, to, 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 to approach this, this um, challenge from another direction, to see a communication tool, for instance, as the center and, or at the start, and then um, add to this communication, uh, communi um, communicating space. So what we would like to uh, know from you as well is how do you see these different options and these different approaches what do you think would be interesting to include in the European way of um, approaching uh, smart learning environments? Um, what would you like to see? What do you hope? What do you hope to see also in the new normal in what is coming in the next year? And then we are of course also looking at the questions that are already there.
maybe as a last uh, mention before we go into the question, um, these examples, but also a few others, we will uh, publish in uh, QA manual for digitally enhanced learning that we are going to publish in the next months. So uh, stay tuned. It's going to be with uh, HFD, Hochschule Forum Digitalisierung. So you will probably hear about it as well if you're part of the community. There is actually, uh, Yasmin here, sorry. There is actually uh, one question from the chat, um, which goes exactly into the direction you just talked about, uh, Renata. Um, the question is, where do you think is the red line between the approach you presented from China and possible smart learning environments in Europe? I mean, I think there are many, many aspects uh, uh, in a possible answer to that. Uh, I already mentioned in my, uh, in my answer. Um, that of course, like um, data, data concerns uh, play a role here. Yeah, but I think you guys have much more to add here. Yeah, it's um... so. Yeah, the, I, I mean, when when it comes to data protection, that's that's uh, so. As I presented uh, at the AI campus uh, and. Um, uh, but it's, of course, uh, I said, we always have to pick the right tools, which serves the learning in the best possible way. That's that's one thing, how we pick tools, but we also have, of course, like different criteria. And I think like this might be much easier in China. Yeah. Um, and uh, out of my own experiment, uh, experience, I can say there is much more exper exper uh, experiments and experimentation going on there because they can use and test so many uh, different tools because we are having like something like uh, which is a good thing of course uh, like the uh, gdpr uh, compliant uh, and uh, and other uh, aspects as well uh, sometimes technically uh, technical issues as well we are not that completely free uh, when it comes to the selection of a certain tool we can attach or embed into into uh, the learning environment. But nevertheless, uh, I mean, that means that if we are using this and making this whole th thing smarter, it, uh, we have to uh, uh, kind of test things out as well and see how we can use these tools and features in a, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the best possible way. But nevertheless, I, I would say like, because like it, it is even like China started so many years earlier, they have much more choice when it comes to pick the right tools and do it the right way. Because they they have uh, they have more freedom when it comes to this, but freedom always it's not always for the advantage of of, of the learners, especially when it, when it comes to to data security and data protection. And as um. As the time is almost uh, over, um, there is one more question from uh, Alexander Kalb. Uh, he asked um, about a chatbot guide, um, if a chatbot guide uh, could guide learners through an individualized learning path. Um, and if you guys could see this adapted in this whole context of smart learning environments. Of if, if I may, of course, uh, I see like, especially when it comes to the AI campus, like process automation, uh, like chatbots, like um, uh, recommender systems. Uh, again, that's already fully implemented in, 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 uh, in, uh, in, in our, our Chinese approach. This is definitely something which needs uh, to be developed and integrated into the AI campus and probably into the current uh, campus uh, as well. But the thing is, we are already, we are live since July. And as you might know, for uh, like these sorts of uh, process automation, we need data. We need data from our learners. We need how they behave, we know how they behave, what they like, what they dislike to adapt it to the learners' needs. But this, uh, these sorts of things like on the, on the, uh, on the uh, uh, LMS level, I would say uh, we, we have to have something like uh, uh, recommender systems and chatbots. And of course, you need this also on the course level uh, when it comes to individual learning pathways. So that's definitely something we are having on the agenda. But again, to have this, this data and to, to develop this, uh, it, it might take some time. Yeah. 
if there are no further questions, um, then we thank you all for participating here and also um, for participating in the questions. Thanks a lot um, and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>